ArcGIS Server 10 includes out-of-the-box data extraction capabilities. With them, you can create web applications like this one, where a user can navigate the map and perform data extraction on the fly. First of all, the user can define which layers in the map are going to be extracted. You can also define the area of interest. And finally, the output format for the features you want to extract. Click on the Extract button and a geoprocessing service will run. It will clip the data within your area of interest and generate a zip file containing the features that you want so you can use them locally. Once the file has been created, you can simply download it to your system. Here's the zip file that we created. And now if we open it, you can see that we have different DWG files, one per layer that we selected in the web application. To enable these capabilities over the web, you need two basic things. A geoprocessing service that does the clip and zip, and a web application that consumes it. First of all, you need to decide what data you want people to extract. Simply add this data to our map, like I did. I have wells, pipelines, and oil fields. From your map document, you should remove any la layers that you don't want people to extract. In this case, I removed the base map layer. Once that you have defined the data, you must create a geoprocessing model. First of all, you are going to create a toolbox. Give it any name that you like. Now we are going to create the geoprocessing model itself. If you navigate to the, the core toolboxes, you can see that there is a new category called data extraction under the server tools. And there are a couple of sample geoprocessing models that you can use. One of them is going to simply clip the files and send them to the client. The other one will actually attach those files to an email that will be sent to the web client. As you can see, I simply copied and pasted the sample geoprocessing model into my own toolbox. The next step is to configure your local copy of the geoprocessing model. Right-click on it and say Edit. We can see that the model has different parameters. The layers to clip will come from your table of contents. You can pick them from the drop-down list to allow web clients to actually see these layers. The area of interest is a polygon. This will be a user-defined polygon. The feature format defines what is going to be the output format in which the features are going to be downloaded to your local machine. If you double-click on it, you can see what will be the default output format. But the feature format is actually a list. Go to the model properties to find out what these values are. This list you can actually modify. You can add or remove output formats from it. We will see later how to do that. For now, we are going to simply accept the default values. Because my map document doesn't have any rasters, I'm going to hide the raster format parameter. You'll note that you could also define the spatial reference parameter, forcing the process to project the data that you are going to download into a particular spatial reference. Save the document and drag and drop the geoprocessing model within your table of contents. At this point, we are ready to publish our map service. So let's go ahead and right-click on the MXT and say Publish to ArcGIS Server. I'm going to put my map service within a particular folder, and you will see that because we added the tool into my table of contents, the geoprocessing capability is enabled. That will make actually two services, my map service to represent the data, and also a geoprocessing service that web clients can use to do the data extraction process. Now that the geoprocessing model has been published, we can use it from different web clients. This is the services directory of my machine. And I can see now the map server and the geoprocessing service. Here is the extract data task that we authored. You will notice that in the description of this task, 
we expose all the different output formats that the user can pick from. At this point, we are ready to create the web application. Let's see how we created it. First, I'm going to go to esri.com slash flexviewer. This is the page where I can download the ArcGIS Viewer for Flex. Here is the link where you can download it. I already did it. This is the root directory of my web server. In it, I put the ArcGIS Viewer for Flex. Notice that I renamed the folder with Petroleum because that's the meaningful name for my application. And within this folder, I have all the files for the ArcGIS Viewer for Flex. You really should care only about one config.xml. Let me open that file. This is actually where you do all the configuration of your application. You can see that it is a text file. and You can manipulate specific tags of this XML file, like the title, the subtitle, the logo that you are going to show up. This section in the document talks about the map content, what layers are going to be displayed in your map. You have base maps, which are cached map services, and also operational layers. You'll notice that I added one called Petroleum, which is pointing to the map service that we created. This is the URL of my map service. If we scroll down a little bit more, you'll see that there is another section which specifies which tools the application is going to include. Bookmarks, Search, Draw, Print, and Data Structure. This is, this is the out-of-the-box data structure widget which understands the geoprocessing service that we just created. You'll notice that this widget actually has its own configuration file. Here it is. This XML file will help us point this widget to the correct geoprocessing model. If I go to the widgets folder, I'll find the data struct widget and within it another XML file. Notice that in this XML file we are using the URL of the exact data extraction task that we created. I pick this URL from the services directory. That's pretty much it. You can save the files and then access this application from a web browser. That's the application actually that we used at the beginning of the presentation. Let's talk now about how you control the different formats that are going to show up in this list. As you probably know, ArcGIS Server has an extension, an extension called Data Interoperability. Through this extension, you can enable way more output formats than you saw so far in this demonstration. In fact, you can open this PDF document and have a look at all the different output formats that this geoprocessing model will support. Now, to enable all these formats, you need to have the extension, the Data Interoperability extension, registered with ArcGIS Server. The documentation is fairly straightforward and it explains how to build the description strings for each of these formats so you can use them in your geoprocessing model. Let me give you a simple example. So I'm going to basically take the model that we created before and I will edit the model, go to the model properties, and open the list of feature formats. Now I'm going to add a new one. Geography, Markup, Language. This is all you need to do. You need to type a string that the Data Interoperability extension will recognize. Once you have done that, you can simply save your model and replace the model in your table of contents. That's about it. Remember that for this really to work, you'll need the data interoperability extension enabled. Now I'm ready to save my map document and publish it again. After restarting the map service and refreshing the services directory, you'll be able to now see that the GML format has been added to the choice list. Let's make sure that it works. I'm going to clear the cache on my web browser and simply reload the application. Nice. So now I can go here. Oh, there you go. Geography markup language. So I can flag the fields or layers that I want. 
draw the area of interest and click Extract. This will now generate a GML file which I can use locally in my applications. OK, there you go. We created the file. Let's save it locally. And now we should find the GML files within that zip file. Well, there is actually more. If we go back to the model, you'll actually see that the Extract Data tool is a Python script. This means that you can actually tweak the code of this script to implement your own business logic. And of course, because this is a geoprocessing model, you can actually combine this tool with many others in the Esri toolbox. So in summary, what we have seen is how to use the out-of-the-box capabilities for data extraction in ArcGIS Server 10. We demonstrated how to author a geoprocessing model from scratch, how to configure a web application that would communicate with this geoprocessing model, and also how to tweak the geoprocessing model so you can link to the data interoperability extension to enable even more output formats in your web application. Thanks for your attention.